weekend of big events around Atlanta, including Freaknik. From my revelation, you know, Freak Nick started as a, uh, as a promotion from some college kids. This is to my knowledge, and there are a thousand myths out there. My brothers were in college in the 80s, and from their point of view, Freak Nick started out as a college party and what we call Grant Party. And it just kept growing. It was about um, black colleges getting together and just enjoying their time in the land, period. Towards the end of the school year, Everybody was ready to just let it go. It was a picnic for college students when they didn't go home for spring break. You know what I'm saying? So it turned into something bigger and bigger and bigger. All the chapters from around the nation and every fraternity just kind of in one city. It's like any other college phenomenon that has always had. I don't care what frat, what age, what um, nationality, ethnicity, it just that's, that's what it was. But it was here in Georgia, and of course it was, you know, basically a black party. That's what it was. Within that network of black colleges, whatever black colleges around the country, obviously the word gets out a little further, and you know, Black kids at, at the at the other colleges are coming. Um, and then it's just kids anywhere coming, you know. Ain't in school the first, but coming. It grew at at a level that was uncontrollable. You would see license plates from, from every state. It, you wouldn't at, at, at a certain point you wouldn't even be surprised. You, you might see a license plate from Washington State. You might see a license license plate from, from Oregon. Freak me was a college thing. Somehow. The hood got wind up, and they took it upon themselves to do it, and they knew to do it at the same time the college was doing it, because you know they were kind of affiliated. You know, some just went to school and the others didn't, but they were still friends from high school. So I, that's how they kind of stayed in the loop. It went from something pure and innocent to the straight, just what the hell? And then when it grew, of course, it got to the hood. When it got to the hood, you know what happened. States, even bigger cities coming here along with us. 
Alabama, South Carolina, everybody was around us. It went as far as Detroit. They chopping off and very cats from Miami coming up here with all kind of you know donkey donks and shit, you know. You know, at the same time they got this shit heated up. 15, 12, who got the best sound, they mean that car show. Like freak they had car shows, it was events all day long, man. Everywhere. Everywhere. That's how you gotta start a party with a loud system. So they started doing them in the cars, basically, man club system in the cars, and the man is your system. If it's really quaking, really vibrating, really got deep bass tones where your trunk just, people can feel that power, they say you got the man in the trunk. And when Freak Nick was out, there was a van called the Astro Man. That was the, the thing to have. If you gonna do some, if you gonna trick something out, you get your Astro Van, you put your gates on it, and you put your speakers in it, and most of the time, they took all the back seats. Like it was just two seats in it. The driver's seat, the passenger seat, and the back of it was just speakers. So that was the opportunity for a lot of speaker companies to go off. Your car be tricked out. You know, you had a candy paint, you had the rims. Um, or you walk around with snakes on your neck. You know, you, you know, walk around like you went to the gym for about a thousand billion hours in one day. Or, you know, then of course all the women, you know, they. Then had, there you go. Now see what that was happening. Girls are really taking that free thing for real. As far as just presentation. It's just time they got these days to do things really. That's really popular at the time. And they just going to the extremes with them. And just everything that they was wearing was to the extreme. People couldn't have it, man. We weren't ready. The city wasn't ready. <laughs> song and what did Lil' Kim, you know, symbolize back then. You know, skin. Skin is in. Proud of herself. I don't know if she got it from being around Freak Nick or Freak Nick got it from her. It was one of the two. You know, it's a perfect balance there. So, skin was in. So, being a female, the more skin you show, the more attention you got. Check. It was chaos, man. Party, man. Freak Nick. Million power of a party. That was Freak Nick. If this was a party in here, and this was Freak Nick time, this was somebody through this party, they would be on everything they could be. They would be standing all up on those things right there. They'd be on the pole. They'd just be squished up on each other, and they'd just humping and grinding on each other. It was just Freak Nick. Depending on that age, hey, that's where you perform. What is it, 93? So, 21 and up, bro, that's where you perform. Everybody going to at the time. 
559 was a big club during Freak Me. I was a DJ at 559. Club Success was a huge club during Freak Me. I was the DJ in club. So every time Freak Me hit, whatever the main good street club was, I was playing there. A lot of people would go to the club and wouldn't even go in the club. The party was in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? And so, in a lot of ways, Freaknik kind of reflected that same aspect because it was it was really just about inhabiting your environment. You know what I'm saying? Like creating your own environment. You might be too young to get in the club, so you gonna party in the parking lot. You know, you gonna ride by, you really in high school, but you gonna ride by with your friends, and y'all don't act like y'all supposed to be out there. So, that was going on uh, in Atlanta at certain clubs, even before Freaknik became a real big thing. I was back then when you put them on black pill. So, even if they go in, the party was in the park. There was so many people, man, where they can't really move, Freaknik was like that. And then outside, it's a party. For people who can't get in, whatever parking lot was around the club during Freak Nick, they were packed too. People was out there. Remember now, cars are systems are everywhere. That's big. You got guys who would rather be outside flexing with their system than actually going in a club. And they everywhere. They out there competing. So it's a car show outside while the club scene is going down inside at the same time. so crazy that you know when you would come up on an exit it might be a mile or two of, of jam traffic trying to come up on this exit so hey people would just make it a party right there people start getting off on the highway yeah you know what i'm saying get crunk you know what i mean start start the party right here you know so yeah it was it was like that it was wild you take the biggest companies in the world, the Walmarts now, the uh, Dillards, the Richards, the JC Penney's, and they all had problems for the weekend because their trucks were stuck in traffic. Now, I don't know where you're from or who was out there, but take your biggest highway and shut it down, and everybody's walking on it like it's a parking lot. And that's the grid lot. And that happened at least five years in a row during free. It was gridlock all over the line. All over the line. Like I said, it's on 20. It's everybody's line. Get out of the car. Turn up the music. Girl getting on top of the bar. It was traffic everywhere. It was traffic before we got off. It was traffic on the highway. I remember being on Metropolitan. And we had 18 wheelers behind us trying to get to... Uh, I can't remember what store was on that street at the time, but he couldn't even pull into the parking lot because it was so much going on. And he took Metropolitan to try to bypass 75 And it was just shut down. And it was at a point where he cut it off, down the back of his cab, and took it down. I mean, because he wasn't going anywhere. Police could, and you got to imagine with all those cars, police can't get in or out. So they can't do anything. You hit the side and all you want. People just stand twerking. Being stuck on uh, Peachtree, not being able to move for at least five hours. Easy. Stuck in traffic. Partying. And the whole freeway, every lane is shut down. All the way across is shut down. There's no movement and people are out of their cars. And that was going on on the highway. So then in the streets, every strip, like your Calvin Roads, your Calvinton Roads, all your strips, all of them packed. They everywhere.
fucking with us on the hip hop like that back in the day, you know what I mean? Artists that were able to kind of like really make their music, um, adopt their, their identity, kind of mesh with Atlanta, obviously Outkast, you know, they, they were able to just really kind of take off. Even, even if Freaknik wasn't necessarily what they were representing in terms of image, you know, but just the popularity that it, that it brought to the city and just the exposure, you know, I think it just gave, it gave Atlanta um, anything related to young black folks exposure. Freak Nick was a big part of us uh, into mainstream because I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Bankhead Bounce by uh, Diamond and D-Rock came from that era. And that was one of, I remember being young because, you know, me and D-Rock very close. And I remember being young seeing D-Rock hit BET, What's Up With The Bankhead Bounce? And I said, we made it. With that, it gave more and more people opportunities from Atlanta to go and meet them. What it became, it was, it was art from everywhere at one time. All of our future mind, uh, you know what I'm saying? Our next presidents, our next politicians, our next whatever, our next criminals or whatever. They would come and meet right here. It's a ring break. Freaknik was, a, was an outlet and it just that it happened to be in Georgia. And time it happened to be Georgia had all these different artists just really developing at that time. Nobody knew what we were just out we have a blueprint. We were just out here doing stuff. Freaknik gave Atlanta national exposure on the underground circuit. You know, um, through just word of mouth. Freaknik definitely put Atlanta on the map. Because once everybody came down here from everywhere, they got to see how to do it. People coming from around the world and they, they they got a chance to see the culture. We have a culture that we grew up on. It's called bass music. It's between Georgia, Florida, and parts of Alabama. Nobody knew about bass music but us until Freaknik came around. And then you ride down the street and you see some country joker riding this Cadillac trunk rattling, but it's some up tempo banging, you know, something banging. And you're like, what is going on? And I think that helped us out tremendously. One, two, three, the four, three, the red dogs done hit the door when they got everybody. We shake was really running the scene, like when I say blue shake, like fast up to for you. That's why Luke was the king at that time. He was like the mayor of uh, booty shake music, all the fast up tempo beats. Um, but um, even Outcast, or, you know, Dutch Family was making their way at that time. So that was some, it was, it was like, to me, it was like that verse. Cause you had UGK pumping, you had A-Ball and JG pumping at that time. Ghetto Boys, so it was, so it was a lot of diversity. It's just that for the Atlanta scene, the booty shake music was really the, the driving force as far as the party. The women like this shake. When the women enjoy the music, then you know what it is. You, you got it. it. Brought every artist that was out during that time a lot of these folks. Because everybody who came down here went to the clubs. They're not hearing nothing but our music. It's Kizzy Rock. It's Kilo. It's Raheem the Dream. DJ Smurf, it's Splat Pack, Luke. And this was kind of the, it was the same thing. And we all had a like at this time a lot of few, few records of them. So the DJ had a nice set. We had a lot of records. And really, put a mark on the South. As far as our style of music. You know what I'm saying? Like New York has their style, LA has their style. We had a lot of style. We smoked a lot of AOC, bass style, stuff like that. Party songs, girls get free in the strip club, whatever. At the time of Freaknik, I won the hottest, the hottest artist in the city of Atlanta. For 1993, I was on a rotation. I had a record with uh, Too Short, UGK, or Too Short, MC Green. And uh, who else? Wade, uh, Eric Sarr. 
So I didn't have to promote shit. It was, you know, people was checking for me back then. You know, I was doing shows. So I was making my rounds throughout the South. Getting me three, five, three, four, five thousand dollars a night for 20 minutes. music was out during Freaknik, and Freaknik was big on bass music, so that's really how I got a lot of exposure, and I had some hot records out at that time, too. I had like, yeah, shawty, yeah, can't stop the rock, what the fuck going on in this lame ass club, I mean, I had several out there, you know, and by that time, I had, a, I had an album out by like 95. DJ Billy MC Assault mixtape. You know, you had people like the J Team and stuff. You had DJ Smurf, Kizzy Rock, Kilo, um, Raheem the Dream, Sammy Sam the Hitman, and all these different artists giving out tapes at that time. Outkast, so Jermaine Dupri. You know, everybody was just always in the streets promoting all of this. You had that going on. You had the Face Records coming in town, so it started to kind of change the music industry. Jermaine started jumping off in the early 90s, late 80s. Then you had, it just started being the snowball effect and Freaknik came around, so all that stuff started connecting, along with all the strip clubs. So stuff just connected month by month and just started rolling this big ball of uh, curiosity and this big ball of energy, which, which we didn't have any thought that it would influence the world 10 years later or five years. from Atlanta after the end, you had a certain cachet. You know what I'm saying? Because Atlanta Atlanta just had hella cool points from free kick at, at that point. So being from Atlanta all of a sudden was not a minus the way it might have been five, ten years earlier to, to cities that were more established, you know, your New York hip hop cities or, or West Coast. I forgot one of the biggest people that benefited from Freak Nick, Lil John and Esau. Yeah! They, they, they benefited tremendously from Freak Nick. You got people, he's not from Atlanta, but you can, we, we adopted him, Jazzy Faith. That benefited a lot. 8 Ball MJG, uh, UGK. These were people at the time, they were, they were gods to us in Atlanta. But then they became known to the world through uh, avenues like Freaknik. Freaknik really put Atlanta on the map. You know, I mean, uh, for whatever people might have ended up thinking about it long term, you know, in terms of the direction it might have gone and, and that kind of thing, Freaknik really put Atlanta on the map for that generation. And in terms of, you know, urban culture, black culture, um, you know, when people think of Atlanta now as kind of a black mecca, that, that, that came out of Freaknik. You know, people would come to Freaknik, they might have been in, in school in D.C. or Maryland or Virginia, and they came to one or two Freakniks and they were ready to move to Atlanta. And a lot of people did move to Atlanta from coming to Freaknik. Put everybody together, and when they got down here, and they got to see this energy and the performance. It just made Atlanta a platform for black music. It's a black city. They brought a lot of money to. Sell hot dogs, you know, uh, not in the heart of Atlanta, but on the outskirts of Atlanta. You know, 
was just crazy. Bunch of traffic, so you might see it. I'm like, I ain't T sitting on the side with a table and chill. They done made them some money selling the reels and shit. I mean, people was able to just set up shop with shirts, you know, freak Nick. And you could sell out. Everybody wanted something that said freak Nick on it. Merchandising was huge. Either you found out who the freak deep inside you, <laughs> or you found out, hey, this is a place to make money. And it was no in between. Either you went out and you just became the freakiest son of a bitch it was, or you became a, a mogul in, in whatever you did. You know, and that's from streets to business, anywhere. You know, that's what Freak Nick brought. Like, it gave us the chance to say, oh, we can make an empire. It made people want to come down to Atlanta to actually start business and become entrepreneurial. And a lot of people have that and from other places. It brought a lot of money to Atlanta. I mean, and it actually helped to put Atlanta on the scene, not just urban, but just period. I mean, uh, I grew up in Atlanta when, you know, all the highways were three lanes. You know what I'm saying? The 20s and the 75s and 85s. They were all three lanes. And then after Freak Nick and the Olympics, of course, you know, it spread it out. You know, five, six, some of them even eight lanes. Now. So that alone should have given an example of the growth. Via economy, it was a big impact. They go into these malls, they shop, they buy, they, they uh, girls, they see big time girls spend money, take them shopping. It was all kind of wild stuff going on with the money. It definitely boosted the economy. It was huge. I mean, I think a lot of people moved to Atlanta after Freak Nick seeing the, how beautiful it was, how nice the people are. If you meet somebody originally from Atlanta, like myself, you'll notice that we are very nice people and welcoming people. A lot of times when you run across people with attitudes and stuff like that, they're really not generally from here, they're from other places, but people that are generally from Atlanta and from the South, we speak to everybody. With that being said, a lot of people from the music industry came this way and felt more at home doing business here because of the culture that we grew up in. Where are you from? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? Yeah. Okay, I'm from Ohio. Uh -huh. California, huh? A reverse migration started. Um, now, I wouldn't attribute all of that to Freaknik, but Freaknik definitely plays a big part in the story of the reverse migration of African American folks starting to move back to the South. Um, obviously, the other really big part is, you know, property value was a lot cheaper and opportunity. You know, jobs and whatnot were, um, were a lot more uh, available uh, here. So those things all run together though, and Freaknik, I think, in a lot of ways was an introduction. I think that's what really helped Atlanta grow. I mean, Atlanta, when you look at when you look at statistics now for reverse migration um, over the last 20 years, Atlanta is at the top of the list. You know what I mean? And uh, and Freaknik came like at that, right at that key time, you know, introducing a lot of young college age kids, graduates, soon to be graduates, uh, the city, you know. It had a very, very historical effect. For one, we sit here doing this in Atlanta, and it was also, yeah, it had a good effect, and people still talk about it this same. A lot of people didn't take Atlanta seriously before Freak Nick until they came and they saw, you know, that there is a culture. Here. I would say Atlanta, you know, people from Atlanta, we're more focused on peace than, you know, a lot of other places where it's like real violent and stuff. We're, we're violent now, but for the most part, we get along. A lot of places you go, the north side don't like the south side, or the east side don't like the west side. You just can't go different places. When you come to Atlanta, especially back before 
it is what it is. Now, A Town down, peace up. Hey. Before it was that, it, it, it was just peaceful. I mean, if you were from the north side, you come part of people on the south side. I think it gave young people in that era a sense of freedom. You know, hip hop has that kind of attitude. You know? Anything is achievable. We're going to do what we want to do. And we already knew we, we were from Atlanta. We already knew we were from a, a city that had this legacy of MLK and the Civil Rights Movement. You know what I mean? So we already had a sense of empowerment from that. Um, I think Freaknik. You know, for all of the all of the craziness that it was, I think it, it it also gave you a sense of freedom that you could carry over into other aspects of your life. You know what I mean? Like it just felt like Atlanta was a city where if you were young, this was where you could pop off, and you know whatever lane that might be for you. Um, you felt like you, know, you could get it here, you could make it here, you know, the way they say it. you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. I think if you were young and black in the 90s, you kind of felt like that about it now. Freaknik was, was unwieldy, you know, you couldn't really contain it, you know what I mean? And so, once it got to that point where um, where it it was infringing on everybody regardless, I mean that in a lot of ways that made it bigger. You know that made it more popular. You know kids were like, man, you gotta you gotta make Freaknik. You know it just became one of those must attend events. It got too big. It it got dangerous. I mean it went from what it started was with colleges. And, it, and, and when it got to the hood, it became more and more dangerous, more rape cases, more murders, more robberies, more stuff like that. It just became dangerous. It just, it, it, it was like a bubble that was just waiting to burst, and it burst. And when it was starting to fall, and it started actually raping the girl, who was getting on top of the car, getting naked and stuff, and snatch them off the car, and they actually started raping them. So that really stopped it. I mean, I enjoyed it from the perspective of college kids coming from different parts of the country, all coming here, promoting, you know, networking and whatnot. But I think to a certain degree, it really had gotten out of order uh, when it came to the way that, you know, these guys would just, you just could run up to an innocent woman and do the things that they would do to it, you know? You know, my, I don't have a cake, top hat and cake. I ain't saving shit but a big old bank of money. But you know, you know, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong. You know, you gotta have a little more respect for the ladies. And what if you run up on somebody woman just because she dressed hot? You know what I'm saying? And this is a married man woman, you grabbing her ass and grabbing her titties, and grabbing the weave and pulling off a wig, you know, could cause some problems. And it just said really got in order. You got all these people from all these other states, all these girls from other states, they come to Atlanta, they turning up on a whole nother level, because they in Atlanta. And we couldn't, I think a lot of the guys that was seeing what was going on was getting caught up. Girls was getting caught up because you got big time drug dealers from everywhere. The Detroit cats coming down, every St. Louis, they all coming down and they are stunning. They driving stuff we ain't even really seen yet, you know? So it, it just, it kind of corrupted, you know, mm. the mindset. We lost focus. Like I said, it brought a lot of money to the city a lot of crime too, so they had to shut it down. I think 96 was probably the last gridlock. After that, 98 police wouldn't let you stop. You gotta keep going. They blocked all the exits on the highway where you couldn't get off. Shut Freaknik down by when the mayor of Bill Campbell started up uh, blocking off exits to popular streets that led to Event. So you had guys who had after parties and different little events going on for Freaknik, but people couldn't get there because you couldn't get off the exit. Now, if you was from Atlanta, you knew how to take the back road. But that big crowd that was coming from everywhere else, they just ride. You got these people on the highway all the way past all the events, and then you let them off once it's way away from it. And that's the system they set up, and that hurt.
police won't let them out. They block all, all of the exits out. If you remember that, you know, most of the interstates in, 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 in the United States are built on an Eisenhower system, which is a military system that was set up by a general of the United States of America. So they can control what goes in and out of any city in America. So what they did, they strategically set up where the college kids could get on in certain places, but they couldn't get off. So they end up like spending eight to 12 hours on the interstate. As they started, you know, trying to corral Freaknik um, and using their police tactics and, and rerouting traffic and really sending people in the loops, you know, that's basically what they would do is they would send you in loop. Traffic was a disaster. That's why the city had to get involved and they did what they did to, to try to detour it. Once you start going around the same block over and over again and seeing the same people, it's, it wasn't fun anymore. And then you know that they would direct you straight onto the highway or something like that. I love Freak Nick. I think it brought uh, a lot of money to the city. But uh, once the city became opposed to it, and you know the college kids said, "Fuck it, we still coming." You just gotta know them. That's probably why it is no, it no longer exists. It'll never be another for me. Never. I, I doubt it. It might be something else that could be created, but you know, Freeman has been done. It's, it's rap has been done. The way the generation is now is too wild. You can't even put them put that many together like that. They're, they're, they're bound to act crazy. It can happen, but you have to change the name. Maybe with a better name and you know, the promoter, you know, get it, go through the proper channels in our city so they can put them in a safe place so the traffic can be directed to the safe place, to a safe place so the kids can go have fun in the spring, break, you know, and you can make them back to their respective cities safe. You know, all the shenanigans, and, you know, the traffic and whatnot. And the reason I feel it was chaos because we didn't go through the proper channels, you know, to set up everything in the proper time. They have rock concerts here all day. They direct traffic in here. 100,000 white folks here tonight, no problem, no, you know, no shenanigans. Do the same thing with the college kids, you know? There'll never be another quote unquote freak me, never. What's going on now, man? Spirals from freak me, man. Because the generations after that, is there hasn't been no leader. And the generations after that, it's just been this like, turn up. That's all they know now. But that's what. Atlanta is, but Freaknik took it to another level. That's why everything is about crump, turn up, pipe up. Everything is like to the maximum. And that came from Freaknik. From the Mississippi Valley to the ATL to Chattown, Clay.
sweet like a ass up. Please believe we on top of our game. 2014, 2015. We still be mashing them out. Well, I feel it kind of pimp ass. Posting these selling pussy for the high. From Hawaii to Maui, I get it all. The whole make of pie. Still pimping and pandering. I cop, I lock, I block, I sit up. I sit up shopping a bitch. And the mama can't tell little dad ain't when I'm a special for special. Got the tricks running up in her like Bruce Jenner. Tax man, tax man. I want pay your taxes. I'm trying to see something like Tony. You say you the plug, but you really be faking you phony.